Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. So welcome to a, um, I think this is mostly like an update video. It's pretty much two in a row, but this, this one is talking about this, um, news that we just, we just got. Uh, there was some speculation before cause there were, I, I don't know. I, I heard some rumors. I, I heard some rumors a while back, um, about Thor being the next Heroes Fest rebirth monster. Um, Basically, we, we just got news again. Um, this is because of a Reddit post that I've, I found. I'll, I'll link the Reddit post and I'll also link the um, the actual link to the, the forum post on, I think it's called inven.co. It's a Korean um, forum slash news site. I, actually, I don't... I, it's it's kind of confusing because I usually, um, whenever I'm trying trying to check for MSL updates, I usually check on like um, MSL's Cafe Neighbor. And that's where they usually post all the updates. But for some reason, this update wasn't posted there. Um, so, but it, it did say in one of the um, one of the lines that you know Thor is going to be the next rebirth monster. So I just wanted to kind of show you guys my uh, my Dark Thor and try to try to recommend that everybody get a grab a Dark Thor in the next um, next next festival. So. Uh, I think I think this will be a good chance to basically just kind of showcase my Dark Thor and what he can do. Um, if you if you want a Thor or if you want to grab one of the Thors, wait, let me upgrade his skills one more time. If you want to <laughs> grab one of the Thors, I would recommend you get the Dark Thor first because he's probably the best one and the most useful one. Um, his main use or what I usually use him for is for Dragon Speed Ten. Um, unfortunately, right now it's not Dragon's Day, so I'm not able to show him. By the time it's Dragon's Day, I actually wait. No, Heroes Fest starts next Monday, so um, yeah, I could probably test him out, and I can probably do a Dragon's V10 video, you know, later later in the week when Dragon's actually comes out. But for now, I just wanted to um, show him off. He's he's a courageous strike monster with a defense down that's based on his crit rate, so. What this means is, if you have high enough crit rate on this monster, basically he's going to get 100% crit. So, you can see over here with these three gems together, I put a broken set because um, because I have no other triangle intuition gems that are attack for some weird reason. But anyways, this one has like 21% crit, so it's not too bad. It also has 14% crit damage, so it's like, it's actually pretty good. Um, this one's just a random defense intuition gem. It has 15% crit, basically two perfect rolls, and those two added together gives me 90% crit. This is just a random um, crit rate gem that I raised a long, long time ago. Like I, I would never have upgraded this, but it actually has really good substats um, for defense and attack. It has a little bit of resist, which isn't really that useful in, in uh, Dragon Speed 10, but having the bonus defense and attack is really, really good. So. This gem set is actually pretty good for a broken set. Um, this one could be better though. This one I could probably switch out and put in another 15% crit gem that has like better substats. Um, but yeah, his gems are pretty good, and he has 100% crit, and his his defense down and his courageous strike are both based on um, critting. So you will need to have near 100%, ideally you should have 100% crit on this monster. So he, he is pretty gem reliant, you, you do need that crit rate. Um, Thors also have a, a defense lead, unfortunately I didn't get mine as a as a variant. He was the first ever rebirth fest monster, um, so it was a long long time ago. I basically I only grabbed one during the first rebirth fest, I threw everything like in and I, I got a dark Thor pretty early on. Um, and it had a, had a square slot, so it was pretty good. So I be, decided to raise this one, and I wasn't able to get a variant because I didn't have a lot of variants to throw into rebirth at the time. All right, so that's that's it for uh, showing the Dark Thor stats. Let's uh, let's let's test them out in different things. There's um, I mostly use him for dragons. You can actually he's not too bad in Golem's B10. You can actually use him as a nuker. Um, I would actually only use them if your attackers have siphon gems because if you if you guys didn't know this having defense down on a first skill on your monsters and your dungeon runs are actually not that good of an idea because a lot of times when you armor break a monster um, all the other monsters go and focus that monster and sometimes it wastes a turn because it basically just overkills the monster so normally 
um, a lot of people would not recommend using armor break monsters in in golems or basically any sort of like farming star stones or any of the elemental dungeons. Um, but the ex exception is if you do have some siphon gems on your units, then it doesn't really matter because um, his armor break can be used against the boss if they do actually focus the boss. And um, Creator Strike actually does a decent amount of damage against the Golem's V10 boss because he actually has a lot of HP. So if you ha have a monster with a siphon set, um, then you can actually make the Thor work pretty well. I'll... What should I do? I'll uh, do a solo light tank. Siphon attacker. Um... Basically showing all the uses you can use for this monster for. Alright, what was the last monster I want to use? Oh yeah, Water Miho. Can't can't go into B10 without a sap. So basically, um wait, wait this this Nike using this Nike might be a little bit unfair. Actually wait, it's it's still fair, because I need to show I need to use siphon to, to do this. Now this Nike's on siphon, she's on triple defense siphon. Um, this is only for farming. This the set has no resistance. It's a very old siphon set. I basically kept these on her since the beginning of time, and yeah, they it's just triple defense. Um, this gen is on double attack, double attack, uh, double attack crit, and I actually use his leader skill to boost him to 100% crit. He only has a he only has 90% right now, but I think 90% is high enough. Um, if I put him on on lead, then actually wait, he actually might be more effective on lead. This way, the Nike also crits, and then this one's on a ruin set. He's the only one that doesn't benefit because he already has a hundred percent crit. Um, but yeah, all these are all these are farm bolts besides the Thor. Um, Jin takes quite a lot long time to farm, but he is farmable. So it should be pretty fast. And by the time you have like a Evo 3 Gen, you should probably have like a Siphon set already. The Nike doesn't really need the Siphon, but the Gen having the Siphon is actually pretty good. So he does do quite a bit of damage because he is a dark monster and when he crits, he, he hits hard. And I have 100% crit on him, so he's always going to be critting. Oh, that was sad. The middle didn't die. I don't think Jin has enough attack to kill the Moonflowers. Even with attack lead, he doesn't have enough attack. I need it. I need like a crit gem with like twenty percent crit damage or some shit like that on him to make it to make it work. All right, this isn't the best team, but it, it does look decent. It's not too bad. Alright, when we get to the boss, um, since a lot of units have Siphon, he also has a full bar. We're probably going to be able to nuke one of the side units to death. And then some of our guys will get a full bar, and then the other one is probably going to die on the second turn. Alright, it didn't die, that was sad. But this run should be not too shitty. Alright, it'll, it'll be like two minutes-ish. Probably, depending on how many saps I land on the boss. Aw oh, man, hate it when he gets his uh, animation off. It's quite annoying. Alright, he finally lands the armor break. But three of my guys are armor broken, so it's up to Miho to uh, finish him off. Okay, this was not a good team. This was... Uh, we, we we need some work. We we might we might need to use two light monsters to do this. But then I don't have a sapper. What am I supposed to do? Actually, I don't think sap's that important. Might just put two light nukers. Might be more stable. It's like two minutes.
but he can work. He's not he's not too too bad. I'll use like two Nikes. This this probably should make it relatively stable. If you really need to, you can use a pa passive healer here as well. I don't have one. Um, I'll borrow. I'll borrow this light Cosmo again. I think this should work decently. This way, I have I have a bit of sap, and I also have a bit of bit of sustain. It's a little bit hard trying to kill the golem without a lot of without any sustain. You have to have like a lot of damage, or you have to have a lot of sap. Um, the the problem actually isn't the waves because usually if you have siphon sets, the waves are are pretty easy to take care of. It's just the when you get to the boss part, if you don't have a lot of sap, then um, it gets a little bit hard to kill the golem. But during the waves with Siphon, most of the time your bars should always be full on your Siphon units. And then with Light Cosmo sustaining, it should be pretty stable. Oh, there's that new monster, the, the, one, um, the one that's currently on event. You can actually use her to passively sustain. She's actually not too bad either. The water one. The, the water jubilee. Yeah, this one's not this this team's not too bad. But I, I probably really would not recommend using an armor armor break monster um, for any sort of farming unless you have siphon siphon units. Because if you don't, then they're just all gonna focus that one unit and it's gonna waste a lot of time. Um, and it's gonna do that every single wave, so definitely don't want that. But um, especially on bosses with like high defense, I think the water um, the water starstone boss. Also, like on B10, has a a lot of defense as well, so you can actually use them to like armor break the boss, and then have like other wood attackers or something just hit the boss really really hard. He's you can use him in a lot of stages. You can use him to to farm. The farm usually bosses that are that are a little bit tanky because you want to use like the the armor break against them. Um, I think Dragon's B10 is where he he truly truly shines. And the other place is uh, Clan Battles, but I don't think we have Clan Battles right now. But you can probably tell, he has Courageous Strike on his second skill and Armor Break on first skill, so he has a lot of utility for Clan Battles. Like, he has utility and damage for Clan Battles, and he's also dark, so um, he'll he'll do quite a lot of damage. So you can use him to farm. You can use him to PvP as well. Um, against teams that don't have a lot of resist, he might be able to just Armor Break and kill them. Against teams that... Alright, let's let's try Dark Thor. Basically you can use him in place of an an attacker. Um Or you can actually mix him in with a bruiser comp, because I mine has one defense gem. So should I should I throw him in an aggressor comp? Yeah, let's let's use an attacker comp. Actually wait, I should uh Wait, no, 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 not, not using Dark Cupid, that's... Dark Cupid's unfair, alright. We use Dark Lot for the attack lead. Um, we'll bring one Dark Seedler. I don't know which one has the best gems, but whatever, any any, any of them work. They all have 100% crit. Um, then I'll use Dark Thor. Then... I guess I can use two Dark Seedlers. Um, these are all rebirth mons from from before, so a lot of people do have them. Especially the the dark Steelers. they were just here last month, so a lot of people have these monsters. Let's see if we can kill this Leo in one turn. If I can armor break him. Oh, it landed. All right. I'm not sure if the lat will kill him. I think the lat might actually kill him. Oh, so close. Rip. Should have used the Seedler. That was unfortunate. All right, we'll uh, we'll put big damage on this purse so she can't heal heal herself to full. The next turn, I'll use another Seedler and just kill her. If I can armor break this, um, she's dead as well. All right, it's fine. We'll just nuke her with two units.
Yeah, but in, in higher tier PvP, um, usually units have a lot more defense. So I think he actually might be better in a if you want to use him in a bruiser comp. This way, um, it's less likely that that um, you know if you keep hitting the same unit with your Thor, eventually the armor break's gonna land and you're gonna be able to kill him. So basically you can just bring some monsters with sustain, um, bring some tanky mons, and then it should work. I didn't do PvP again this week, so my rank's pretty low. Um, <laughs> But yeah, you can use him in a lot of a lot of comps. Actually, he's not too bad. He's he's all right for a debuffer because his debuff is like a hundred percent, and he's dark, so he he does do quite a lot of damage. Um, all right, well, let me find something with a defense lead. I'll use like event mons. Uh, dang it, where is she? She's not here. All right, but there she is. All right, so this is the Dark Sarah. She's a. I have her bruise. Oh wait, no, I have her attacker build. I think. Yes, crit rate double attack. Um, just make things tankier. They don't have a lot of threat. They only have one light monster, and I can just bring in like some some random aggressors um, or attackers. It could be anything. Actually, I should probably use aggressors just to just to make things a little bit fair. Um, I'll use something with an HP lead, like her, just to boost the HP lead, and then I'll I'll bring some random uh, uh, aggressors. Um, should I use the Mihos? The Mihos are overpowered this month. I'll use the Sea Stars instead, just to make things a little bit more fair. I'll use my two shitty Dark Sea Stars that have like no resist. All right, these two should work. The HP for the for higher effective HP. This way, um, because they. Thor has a defense gem, and the Sea Stars are double defense. This way, um, they're tankier and less likely to die. These guys mostly rely on debuffs, so since like I'm full dark, um, Thor also their enemy Thor also starts with zero percent resist, so it's actually less likely that he has max resist. So I try to armor break him, and it does land. So I just start hitting him with the aggressors. I didn't crit because their gems suck. And it gave me a light Arthur. We'll just put some damage on him. First, we'll hit my fire unit, shock my sea star, but it's fine. Um, we'll just try to armor break. Actually, wait—he just straight out died because he's super squishy. And pretty much, uh, you know, you could just put some damage on on this. Um, dark healers have a lot more resist, so I don't want to try to armor break this. I'll try to armor break the the purse next turn, um, but this turn I'm going to try my best to uh, to kill this Hana. And then I can try to armor break, and it does land, so that's pretty good. You know, even if your enemy has um, really high resist, if you if you keep hitting that same unit over and over with your Thor, eventually, you know, it's eventually it's gonna land. And um, if you're using a team that has like that, that's like relatively tanky, in three or four turns, you you know, you'll you'll land a debuff, and then and then it's gonna die. So he's he's not too bad in, in uh, PvP as well. I use him a lot in uh, clan PvP because in clan PvP I can't use all the ag aggressors I want. Um, so sometimes I use him for clan PvP, but he does do pretty well there as well. So I definitely recommend anyone that doesn't have a Dark Thor grab one during the Rebirth Fest because he's very very good. Like he's he's super super good. Um, this weekend I'll probably. I think because recently I've been getting people ask about like dragons, um, I'll make a dragons dragons guide video again, um, and then just we'll we'll go from there. And I th I can show him where he like r does really really well. But if you guys are collecting four stars and stuff, I recommend you start saving right now because you only have a few days left before Heroes Fest starts. And once it does, um, you'll have like three one and a half month to try to try to get as many Thors as you need and if you're if you're a new player um, I would still recommend you grab grab one and if you can only grab one I would definitely um, recommend you grab the dark one because the dark one's the best there's actually a few other ones that are pretty good uh, most of the Thors are actually not too bad the fire one is what does the fire one do can't, I can't remember I think he has like defense down 
or something. Alright, he has double defense down. He's a defender type monster. 70, 50, I think it's upgradable. This probably goes to 80, this probably goes to 60. Um, this isn't too bad, but it feel, I feel like the other Thors just really outclass him. Like, he's not a bad monster. He's actually really quite good for Titans. He's, he's got a defense lead and two defense down. He's actually really, really, like, pretty good. And he's he's a four-star, so he has better stats. Like, if you use um, if you use him versus, versus, like, Fire Candling, like, Fire Candling's an attacker, so the Fire Candling will need better gems and won't survive as well. But he's, like, an actual defender and, and he's four stars. So, you know, if you just look at it from that perspective, he's actually a really good monster. But the problem is the other Thors are just so much better that he just completely gets outclassed. But he's not too bad, actually. Um, I remember all the Thors are, are actually quite good. The Water one is a attacker. Um, he's a morale boost attacker. He's got morale boost predator. I think besides the Water Poseidon, he's probably the best uh, morale boost attacker. Wait, wait, this one boosts allies HP. So he's not even that good. Basically, if you want to get him, he's like a better version of the Water Mona because he has Predator on second skill. So he's going to be able to nuke really, really hard if you have him like on a Siphon set. Um, it's not too bad. He's actually quite good because there's not a lot of um, Water Attackers that have Siphon on on first skill besides the Water Mona. Like if the like Fire, there's like Fire Jin, Fire Siegfried, Water, there's like. There's like nothing. Not even the Nat Fives, like there's there's not a lot. Like Water Arthur um, doesn't even have as high attack as him. But then again, Water Arthur has like 50% SP boost. So if you just want to use him to like maybe, because he has higher damage, like he has ba higher base attack than the Water Arthur, because Water Arthur is balance type. Um, you can, you can use him to farm like fire stages. Like if you want to one shot, um, one shot some fire stages. I can't like B eight, um, B B eight. The fire, the fire star stones. Um, if you want to use this for, uh, I think on some of the, uh, on the last two maps there might be a few stages that are that are um, really good for water only, like this one. The gold stage in uh, Oroa Plateau. It's dark water fire, and then he. Fire. Water has elemental advantage over fire, and it's element neutral against the other two. So, water is the best element to be farming this stage. If you want to farm the gold stage for like highest efficiency, he's actually the best monster. Now that I think about it, I may maybe I should grab like two of those, just so I can farm that stage like really, really efficiently. But yeah, that's that's uh that's Water Thor. Um. It's a, it's a very, very limited use, but he is the best for the job if you need a water, like, mor morale boost nuker that you put on Siphon. Like, I think he's the best one. Um, for wood, the wood one's actually quite good for Titans. He's got Creator Strike on first skill and a blind on second skill. It's an 100% blind as well because, um, you know, stacks with crit. So if you have 100% crit, it's 100% blind. Same with your Courageous Strike, you have to have high crit. Um, Courageous Strike on first skill is actually quite good because you can get it off. Like it's it's guaranteed damage. You'll you'll always get it off, um, even if you don't get the blue soul. Unlike Courageous Strike on second skill, but um, he does require the crit, so he, he he is a little bit gem reliant. But if you have good gems, then shouldn't really be that much of a problem. So he's actually quite good for Titans, and yeah, that makes him that makes him pretty good. The, the Light Thor is actually really good as well. The Light Thor is uh, much better than the Dark One for PvP. He's got Shock and Defense down. Um, and he's got the Defense lead. So basically, you can use him to make your... Like, if you have an HP Aggressor, you can use him to make your HP Aggressor have a lot higher effective HP with a Defense lead. Um, and then... And then he has Shock. Like, he has Shock and, and Defense down. And Thor's also have Skill Books. So his, his Shock, I think, goes up to like 70%. Um, which is quite high, and it lasts for two turns. Um, I think he's more of a 
one of those monsters that you just put on defense, and then he'll he'll help you win sometimes. Because if they're coming at you with like dark attackers, um, since he's really really tanky, like look at look at the amount of HP and defense he has. Like this monster is insanely tanky. He's got really really good stat distribution, um, and he's light, so he's always going to be hitting the dark monsters. So if you're coming coming in with like dark attackers attacking him, uh, there's a chance that he lands like the two turn shock on your on one of your dark attackers, and that can basically just win you the fight. So he's he's one of those monsters where you just want to have like really good RNG, and then he might be able to completely win for you. Um, he's definitely quite good for PvP. For for uh, clan PvP um, defense, he's also quite good as well. So he's basically just a monster you throw on PvP defense. And he just happens to also have a d defensive lead, which makes him really good for for leader. Dark Thor, I talked about for the whole entire video. Um, this is the Thor I grabbed, and I have no regrets. And I'm actually really, really happy I did because he did help me quite a lot um, throughout my whole entire MSL career. He has uh, <laughs> he has helped tremendously. Um, so he's he's a really, really nice monster to have. He mainly help me helps me with dragon speed 10 i'll be able to show it this weekend when i do like a dragon speed 10 guide um really really nice monster definitely definitely worth getting should uh everyone should grab him yes all right so if you want me to rank the thors uh i would say dark number one and then light and then i would tie these two Depending on what you're more interested in, in farming or in titans, and then fire would be last, because fire fire is not bad, but fire just gets outclassed by all the other ones. That's what that's how I feel. But you know, if you want some fire debuffers for like for defense down, um, he's one of the best. Like besides like fire Odin, he's he's pretty much the best. But anyways, that is that is pretty much it. Um, just wanted to give you guys a heads up and talk a little bit about the Thors because it's uh, shit's shit's about to go down. Like shit shit is about to go down. I I'm actually quite happy because um, last month um, during Heroes Fest or Clan Fest, I saved all the four stars. I was originally gonna feed them and and make one more with Incubus, but I decided not to do that because I felt like I didn't really need to, and I raise the whole well actually i didn't raise i i have a whole bunch of four stars that i'm i'm like ready to feed right now i have so many four stars that i don't need um these i only need to keep one of them and a lot of the radishes from before um i can feed the seedlers i basically i decided i i should only just use one seedler i don't really need need all the seedlers the birdies as well i decided to just keep one so i can feed all the other light birdies away um that I have a lot of random, like lats as well from from previous rebirths. The Phibians, I, I don't need them anymore, um, and I have a whole bunch of like random four stars, like these Jeans, these uh, Yukis, these I can't feed the Succubus, and then I have like all these Capture Mons that I have, like legendaries in storage, so I can uh, I can use them as well. But yeah, I have like a shit ton of stuff to rebirth, and I also have like, um, I think I have a hundred eggs as well, and I have a lot of astrogen. So if I want to summon during Heroes Fest for for more um, more four stars, I can do that as well. So I'm basically like I'm I am so prepared to for this for this rebirth fest. But anyways, that's pretty much it. Um, Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.